Alright, so in this video we're continuing our series on modeling the detailed coffee shop model. So in this particular video we're going to start uh, working on adding the joints inside of the stucco as well as adding some detail to our building. Again, really focusing on those small details that usually get left off. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so what I was really working on in this part of the model is when we model this building out for rendering, we're gonna want some ins and outs um, in the building, especially on joints like these stucco joints that are in here. So, and what I'm trying to do is a lot of the time when you render out a building, um, you kind of leave off some of those details or you try to make them up using your textures, which depending on where the building is can make a lot of sense. But a lot of the time what that means is you're uh, surfaces all start off looking really flat and so what I'm really trying to focus on when I do this is things like modeling out the little caps on top of the stone here as well so you can see how all I'm doing is I'm just finding where that cap is and one thing I want to point out is if you look at this um, one of the photo textures is slightly higher than the other and generally you want to use your model context for setting heights of things like that so don't necessarily the photo textures are there as more of a guideline than anything else. So you want to model this building out the way it would be built, right? So you want your stone to be the same height on both edges. And it doesn't really matter as much where that photo texture is because you're going to go back and adjust this later. So, or you're going to go back and you're going to replace that with an actual texture later. So you want to model this out as it would be built built and uh, kind of give priority to that. But you can see how one of the things that I'm really focusing on here is making sure that I'm modeling out the different light fixtures and things like that on the outside of the building. So, and for right now, I'm just kind of putting those in as placeholder geometry. So it's just a rectangle that comes off of the building, but that's mostly so I don't forget it. Because it's one of those things that I think people forget a lot of the time is you forget that you've got all these little things hanging off of your building. You've got your light fixtures, you've got whatever different kinds of detectors and other things like that well if you leave those off and then you try to render out your model it just doesn't look right like our brains are really good at looking at something and figuring out if it looks right or if it doesn't um, even if we don't exactly know why and so that's why attention to detail is going to be so important on something like this. But what I'm doing here, and I really don't like the way that these uh, these sunshades turned out. I think I probably need to go back and remodel them. But what I'm doing here is I'm just going to model these up in the same way that I did on the side of the building. So I'm just splitting this face up, and then I'm using the extension Lattice Maker to give it some depth. So you can see how what that does is that'll let me give this depth, and it'll kind of extrude it really quickly. So rather than me having to do a whole bunch of offsetting or anything like that, um, I can just use that extension in order to do that. And so you can see how what I'm doing here is for all of my different stucco areas, I've modeled out those joints and I've just push pulled them in a little bit. But right here, what I'm doing is I'm starting to model out the vertical joint. And so for that vertical joint, I'm just going to take this object and I'm just uh, drawing kind of guides through here. And I'm just going to split this face up. And there's actually probably a better way to do this than the way I ended up doing it. But um, that's okay. We got the look that we're going for. So you can see I'm just modeling out the face for that stucco joint. And then I'm just going to push pull it in. So again, we get that depth in here so that when we render this out this actually looks like a realistic material with the actual joints in here and you do need to remember as you go to make sure that you're still modeling out all the different parapets and caps that go on your roof so that's another thing that a lot of people forget and it makes your uh, renderings look really unrealistic is you just kind of make this a smooth surface along the top. Well, the problem with making it a smooth surface is in real life, what they do is they actually make caps that hang over the edge so to handle the moisture. And that's something that you unconsciously notice. And so if you don't give these any kind of thickness or anything like that, then you're going to have a problem. And so what we're doing is we're roughing out where the parapet's going to be. Then I'm just going to drop this roof level down a little bit. And depending on the angles that you're showing your rendering from, this may not be that big of a deal. Um, if you're going to show anything from the top, then you need to make sure that you're modeling out this roof. If everything is from ground level, you may be able to get away with a little bit more. But 
I still find it helpful to model everything out because you're going to be able to see some of that detail from the ground. So especially where like the coffee, the darker metal panel is and things like that, you're still going to be able to see that. So it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and model out that roof as realistically as you can without wasting a ton of time on it. I mean, obviously, if you're never going to see your roof, don't waste hours and hours on it. But um, it's something that is going to affect the way this looks. So if you can spend a couple minutes on it, it's really going to affect your result. And so you can see how I'm just going through and I'm just continuing to finish modeling these out. And there's actually a decent tool for creating recesses like this. I want to say it's in a thousand one bit tools. I will try to remember to link to that in the notes below. I did make a video about that, but it does add those recesses without having to model all of this out manually. So um, and that's probably something I should have thought about when I was modeling this. But, um, <laughs> you know, you don't always remember what the tools are that you can use um, in order to model things out. So sometimes it just kind of is what it is and that's OK as well. But I will try to remember to link to that tool in the notes down below. And so one thing that I didn't do very well on this front face is I didn't realize at the time that uh, there was a little bit of recess before the glazing is in here. So I was trying to figure out what to do with this and uh, I can't remember if I end up, I think I just kind of leave it as is for now. And I you know, um, we may go back and fix that a little bit later, but that's something that's important to pay attention to when you're initially modeling all of this out is just notice if things are recessed or not, because that's another thing that makes a huge difference from a realism standpoint is if something is set back as opposed to being flush with the front face, that just looks a lot more realistic. So when you're initially setting up your models, make sure you're paying attention to things like that because you can really save yourself some rework um, on the back end when you do that. And so again, this is just another thing where I'm modeling out this downspout and my goal here wasn't necessarily to model the most perfect realistic downspout in the world. It was just to model something that looks a little bit realistic. So, um, and uh, I can go back and add detail later, but if I'm not paying attention as I go, then it's really easy to forget to add things like this. So it's, it's really kind of a conscious decision of make sure you add it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then if we have to fix it later, we can, but if you forget to put it in, you're probably going to have trouble remembering to do that. So it's kind of one of those things where if you see it, throw something in there. So something is going to be better than nothing. And then if it's not realistic, then you can go ahead and add more detail a little bit later. And so again, sometimes you just kind of have to model around things when you're doing this. And again, if you rough it out early and you make it something that may be passable, then you can always try it in your rendering program and see if it looks any good or not. So same kind of thing with these electrical boxes, right? I'm just going to model out a simple electrical box. And again, I'm trying to add a little bit of depth where the door would be because big flush surfaces just don't really look very good. Um, so I'm trying to remember to do things like that as well as modeling the pipe that's coming out of the bottom here and the piping does not have to be super detailed or accurate or anything like that it just needs to be piping because your brain is going to be looking for the piping in this situation um, because it's an electrical box and the wiring has to come in from somewhere so again just try to remember to model out these recesses as you go and these other things as you go because coming back and adding detail later at least in my opinion can be really difficult and so even here with like the doorknob i'm not looking to model out a super detailed doorknob unless you're going to do a close-up of your doorknob later then you may want to think about doing that a little bit differently but in this situation it's just let's get something in there and let's see how it looks and then we can always add detail later so same thing with the lights. We're just going through and we're continuing to do that. And so same thing with this building right here or this spot right here. There's a ladder that goes up over the top. So it's like a roof access ladder that goes in right here. And again, it's just another one of those things where you want to make sure that you add it in here. And I'm not looking to model the world's most detailed ladder. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to draw this shape out and then I'm going to use a pipe along path in order to add a pipe 
um, where all of these um, where these lines are and so that's gonna make up the steps and other things like that so I'm just gonna model this out and then I'll have it in here and if we need to go find a more detailed ladder model later we can definitely do that but I will try to remember to link to lines to tubes in the notes down below as well and so that's basically going to be the process moving forward with this model is just um, step back, take a look, make sure you're modeling the detail, then step back and take a look and just be constantly reassessing what you're doing. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Hopefully you're finding this series helpful. Again, I'm just trying to train myself to pay attention to detail. And so hopefully you're taking something useful out of this as well. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.